I am Sudarshan Gupta. I will be talking about AUVs. Autonomous underwater vehicles have become an attractive alternate for underwater search and exploration because these are less expensive than the conventional manned vehicles and they provide an uh, automated and reliable source. These AUVs are robots that travel, navigate and perform the task without the need of input from an operator. They find application in oil and gas exploration of seas and can create seafloor maps. They also help in oceanography and studying of water bodies. In defense sector, they can be used to detect mines, help in anti-submarine warfare and for black box localization and retrieval. AUV Matsya, which is a low cost, indigenized and fabricated in India. It can navigate in obstacle filled areas, detect obstacles and pass through those obstacles. It has many applications corresponding to the real world applications. The AUV named Watsa 5.0 is powerful and capable of navigating obstacle filled underwater arenas, detecting obstacles and avoiding them. It can also detect and shoot torpedoes at predefined targets, emulating defense applications and can follow certain patterns on the floor of the arena, emulating the oil pipes, underwater fiber optic cables that are laid. It can manipulate various objects placed underwater and also locate underwater pinger placed at an unknown location using acoustic homing techniques, similar to finding black box of aircraft. Matsya AOV addresses the absence of indigenous and affordable technologies for support in challenging, disastrous and life-threatening situations where divers find it difficult to reach or need assistance such as floods, sunk submarines, oil leaks, missing objects and regular time-consuming inspection tasks. Matsya AOV has won many prizes in national and international competitions including the prestigious RoboSub competition. There are various multidisciplinary challenges and problems that are faced by the vehicle. In many cases, we need a multitude of features including, but not limited to, mission planning, navigation, localization, mapping an object from a distance, marking points of interest, pick and place, and many more. The vehicle undergoes a rigorous process of testing, screening, and review before it is put in water. Once the vehicle is put in water, the thrusters kick in to stabilize the vehicle in unstable operating conditions. We have eight thrusters, three in surge, three in heave, and two in sway. These thrusters provide six degrees of freedom to the vehicle. The motion of the vehicle is controlled by a PID and an LQR controller. We are now developing a controller based on predicted external forces using wave models that can be used to control our vehicle in ocean environments. Once the vehicle is put in stable operating conditions, the eyes and ears of the vehicle take over. We have two cameras, one facing the front and one facing the bottom. These provide visual input to us. We use state-of-the-art models including YOLO and SSD, which are trained on an extensive custom data set of underwater objects and environments. We correct for color distortion, effects of sunlight, and can also detect objects and contours underwater. The vehicle is equipped with four hydrophones, which can be used to find and locate underwater sound sources. We have implemented a custom TDOA algorithm based on the principles of YDSE to achieve this task. We have also implemented an in-house DAC using FPGAs to achieve high sampling rates. We also plan to use a sonar based on the tasks at hand. Using the live input stream from the cameras, we identify objects of interest. Once we have identified the object, our manipulator arm comes into picture. Our current arm uses high torque motors that can carry up to one kilogram of load underwater, using absolute encoders for high precision. We are currently developing a three degree of freedom arm that can be mounted on any AUV or ROV for maximizing utility. The controls and data processing of the arm are contained within the arm, thus allowing the main computer to run independently for the arm and the vehicle, thus boosting modularity and reducing the risk of total system failure in case the arm fails. Using the live input stream from the cameras, we align our vehicle and use pneumatically actuated torpedoes to fire torpedoes at target objects. Using the feed from the bottom camera, we can locate objects at the bottom of the pool and mark them using our marker dropper. Given the various sensors, thrusters and other electronics in our vehicle, we use two high capacity batteries to power our vehicle. These batteries are housed in two hot swappable battery pods. 
and are controlled by our custom made battery management system. We work every day to improve our vehicle's hardware and software capabilities. Before deploying our vehicle in a swimming pool or sea environment, it is critical that we make new simulation algorithms to ensure that the results are as expected. Hence, we have created a simulator using Gazebo which interfaces our vehicle using ROS. This robust simulator is unique as it can simulate various physical phenomena such as drag, gravity and sea waves ensuring efficient modeling and testing of our vehicle. Our vehicle also undergoes static testing which includes in-air waterproofing and pressure testing of our hulls before assembly of the vehicle. Our vehicle, Matsya, has been extensively tested at the swimming pool here at IIT Bombay and at Transdec, a facility run by the Department of Defense USA at California. It is at a technological readiness level of 7, indicating that it has gone system prototyping under operational conditions. Matsya is capable of performing a variety of tasks with complete ease. Let us take a look at the torpedo task. This task entails shooting torpedoes through cutouts of challenging and complex shapes. To program and simulate this task, we make use of Gazebo software along with YOLO and OpenCV for better estimation. There is a trade-off between proximity to the cutouts for better accuracy in the torpedo's path and the camera's field of view as going too close to the cutouts decreases the camera's FOV. Matsya employs a timeout based on the number of points allotted to a task so that we can maximize our total score for the run. In RoboSub 2021, Matsya had greater stability and accuracy of its localization which helped improve the success rate for this task. Next, we have the gripper task, which is famous for being difficult and having a low success rate. In this task, we use an outward spiral scan motion to locate the bins. After we have located the bins, we identify which lid is on top of them and then deploy the arm to lift the cover and expose the bins. We then use our bottom camera to confirm whether we have lifted the covers of the bin. We also use hydrodynamically designed marker droppers which also contain stainless steel balls which allow them to drop vertically and quickly directly into the bins. It was a crowning moment for the team when the vehicle successfully completed the task in RoboSub 2016. In RoboSub 2021, Matsya boasted an accuracy of 90% in the open bin task and 70% in the closed bin task. Next up, we have the buoy task. Matsya can effectively distinguish and hit a predetermined color of buoy among three pre-decided colors, generally red, blue, and green. It is difficult to distinguish between the three colors in different lightings, presence of algae, and other conditions which aren't typical of a swimming pool. It ultimately comes down to the ability of the sensors, cameras, and code to be able to distinguish between the different colors in a new, unknown setting. So when we designed this vehicle, we looked at the system center principles, and we obtained the use cases from the various agencies, from the use cases, we obtain the functional requirements. From functional requirements, we get the performance requirements. And from, based on these performance requirements, we have selected various components, like looking at the thrusters, or the onboard computer, or the camera. So this is driven from the system engineering principles. And another aspect which I earlier mentioned, which is related to software. So there are a lot of tuning has to be done before it getting deployed. So all that know-how we have with us when we are looking at this vehicle and that makes it a complete make in India and Atmanirbhar vehicle. So when you look at from the use cases point of view, it's a very compact vehicle. When you look at the length is only one meter, 0.4 meter at the width and 0.6 meter as a height. So it's very easy to handle, deploy it on site and that makes it very good system for user to deploy and easy to deploy. Both are important from user's perspective. Now when we look at defense application, these can be used for shallow water navigation, identifying some object which is shallow water. But it also equally have a commercial value. When you look at the ship, ship hull inspection, it can be easily used and deployed for ship hull inspection. There's another unique feature in this vehicle is, there are torpedoes in this, so which can be used for if you identify something and which you want to fire at something, you can use those torpedoes to target those. There we use a lot of vision-based uh, identification of the target and then firing it, which is another unique feature of this vehicle. 
The team consists of students and mentors from multidisciplinary streams right from the first year to the final year of engineering. The team is divided into four well-knit groups which are mechanical, electrical, software and business subdivisions. There are team leaders who head the overall functioning of the team and handle the operations and finances. In addition, we have subdivision heads who look after the research and development within each subdivision. Students take up task of more responsibility as they grow older in the team. There are regular brainstorming sessions to ideate new novel innovative ideas. We have frequent design analysis and code reviews to maintain the quality of the vehicle. In addition to this, we have regular brainstorming sessions where people ideate new ideas for the vehicle. The senior students in the team take up the task of grooming the new ones. The decade-long knowledge within the team is transferred year to year smoothly. And each year, teams take up the task of providing new functionalities and modifying the existing vehicle. The team is currently working in collaboration with Larson and Tubro under the Imprint 2C initiative by the Government of India. We are developing a Class 1 ROV which is to be deployed into the sea for scanning and surveillance. We are also open for new collaborations with the industry. We are also open to potential monetary support to fund these projects. Knowing that it is an indigenous design and it has various capabilities, many applications that can be built around it. We are ready for technology transfer and for the commercialization. Thank you.